Global climate processes on Earth are the product of the physics of ocean, sea ice, and atmospheric systems interacting at multiple scales. In order to investigate the future of Earth's climate, scientists must study these systems and variables in silico, or using computer simulations of climate physics to test theories that cannot be resolved with current and historical data alone. Because each of these systems are governed by different physical processes, they are modeled separately. However, to accurately simulate global climate, these model components must be coupled so that events in each system become computationally interdependent. The direct interaction between ocean and atmospheric systems in the coupled model can be seen here, as a strong storm forms off the coast of Africa and passes over the Atlantic. Tight wind circulation in the atmosphere leaves a visible trail of heightened surface speed on the ocean surface. Though climate is a global process, its effects manifest on multiple, smaller scales, which must be resolved by the coupled model. As high-performance computing continues to improve in speed and accuracy, climate simulations can be executed with increasing fidelity and at finer resolutions than ever before. Here, we present fully coupled Department of Energy's Energy Exascale Earth System Model, or E3SM, Global Ocean, Sea Ice, and Atmospheric Models. This global data totaled 9 terabytes and was visualized on TAC's Stampede 2 supercomputer in order to explore one localized effect of climate, the formation of open ocean and coastal pollinias in the Arctic and Antarctic regions. Pollinias influence Earth's ocean currents, which are primary drivers and stabilizers of both global and local climate. In order to effectively maintain equilibrium, the ocean's global currents transport heat from the equator to the poles and exchange heat and moisture with the atmosphere, generating the weather patterns we see every day. Sea ice, ice that freezes atop the ocean and floats on the surface, plays an important role in both regional polar climate and global climate processes. During the fall and winter months, sea ice grows and expands, then shrinks and melts in the spring and summer. These annual cycles alter the salinity and temperature of the polar ocean surface. Polynias interrupt this sea ice cover. Polynias are large openings in sea ice, ranging in size from 10 to 100 kilometers wide. Due to their scale and location, polynias can drastically affect cyclical ocean, atmospheric, and cryospheric processes, making them an important emerging subject of study for geoscientists and climate modelers. There are two types of pollinias, coastal or latent heat pollinias, and open ocean or sensible heat pollinias. Coastal pollinias form when catabatic winds, strong, cold, and dry downslope winds driven by gravity coming off of a major landform push sea ice away from the coast. This is a really important process for overturning of the world's oceans. Ocean overturning is important for global climate because it's a mechanism by which heat from the surface of the ocean that comes from mainly from the atmosphere is transported to the deeper ocean, as well as carbon dioxide that's dissolved into the surface of the ocean and other gases. So here you see an example of a coastal pollinia forming off the East Antarctic coast it's a consequence of very strong catabatic winds whose streamlines you can see is barreling out towards the Mertz Glacier Tongue, which has existed until just the last decade. And this is an example of a complex interaction between the topography of the Antarctic ice sheet, the state of the atmosphere and the ocean that pushes sea ice away from the coast and acts as an ice production factory that in turn stimulates overturning of the world's oceans. In contrast to coastal pollinias, open ocean pollinias form when warm ocean water upwells to the surface, melting the sea ice. They are almost exclusive to the Southern Ocean and the ice packs surrounding Antarctica. Here in the E3SM model, we see an open ocean pollinia approximately the size of Colorado forming in the Waddell Sea region. Pollinias in global climate models are indicative of the model's physical fidelity as pollinia formation is sensitive to the complex interactions between ocean, sea ice, and atmosphere. Since the 80s, we haven't really had these large pollinias, and it's important to understand why, and also if climate change has any uh, role to play and why they've stopped occurring. 
The process of open ocean pollinia formation in the winter and spring months begins when warm, deep equatorial waters circulate to the southern ocean. Frigid air causes the surface of the ocean to freeze, forming sea ice. As the warm equatorial waters circulate an upwell to the surface, they come into contact with the sea ice, melting it from below. The thin layer of ice melt is visible here, in this cross-section. A thin layer of dark blue, cold water sits between the ice and the warmer water below. Sometimes this melting thins the sea ice enough to break through, forming an opening in otherwise solid ice pack, an open ocean pollinia. In order for ice crystals to form, they must reject the ocean brine. This means the sea ice is composed of mostly fresh water. When the ice melts, it produces a layer of fresh water just below the ice. We can see this happening here. As the ice melts and the pollinia forms in this finite region, plumes of dense, cold, and relatively fresh water descend into the saltier, warmer water below. The sinking of this cold water displaces the warm water beneath it, beginning a continuous cycle of vertical mixing. Here we can see the densely packed convective plumes moving beneath the nascent pollinia. This cycle becomes a positive feedback loop, continuously pushing warm water upward, which melts any new sea ice that might form and maintains the open ocean pollinia over the course of the season. Looking more closely above the mod rise, three-dimensional volume rendering reveals how the density of convective plumes increases in July when the pollinia opens at the surface. Visualizing and understanding the drivers of these processes requires coupled models that fully incorporate ocean, atmosphere, and sea ice. Using E3SM, the Energy Exascale Earth System model, we have accomplished this task. E3SM was created by the U.S. Department of Energy to assess climate-related risks to the energy sector, such as water availability, storms and heavy precipitation, coastal flooding, and sea level rise. For this visualization project, we really wanted to see the detailed interaction between the climate components. So we ran three years of simulation and saved a large number of variables at very fine time intervals. The daily snapshots were sufficient for capturing slow-moving data features, such as ocean currents, but not faster-moving ones like wind direction and magnitude. We therefore re-ran the time period of interest and saved numerous fields at a six-hour frequency, then applied a linear interpolation to generate smoother animations. In order to study three-dimensional ocean fields of the Polynia regions at this frequency, we excised a 300 million cell subset of the data. This enabled scientists to study both the dynamic conditions that produced Polynias and the reciprocal effects of Polynias on the surrounding oceans and atmosphere. The reason this is significant is you're not looking at observations, you're looking at output from one of the world's premier fully coupled Earth system models run on one of the world's fastest supercomputers. And this model enables us to investigate lots of sensitivities on Earth, especially related to how the world's climate will change as greenhouse gas concentrations increase. Studying these models together presents a difficult visualization problem. The challenge involved developing visualizations that combine multiple variables from different domains such that a viewer would be able to understand them in context over time without obscuring any major elements. The final product is a more intuitive, moving image that feels akin to real-world observation. Another arduous yet highly rewarding challenge was generating visualizations iteratively with continuous input from ocean and sea ice scientists. Each new visualization revealed new and potentially more interesting features, which changed what the scientists were most eager to investigate. We believe the process engendered both inventive visualization methods and exciting new opportunities for scientific discovery moving forward. The value of these visualizations is, is twofold. Firstly, they're excellent communication tools for sharing with the non-scientific community or the general public as to, as to what we are capable of achieving now in climate science. But more importantly, these animations and visualizations enable scientists themselves to relate changes in the atmosphere to changes in the ocean and changes in ice cover and changes in land systems all together as a complex dynamic system.